So a while back when I was doing all of my ink blending combos with Distress Oxides, I received a couple comments of people requesting specifically color combos for sunsets or just different skies. So when I saw this Wildflowers background stamps, um, there's two stamps actually, from Simon Says Stamp, I knew I wanted to create something with this and I thought it'd be perfect for all of those sunset blended backgrounds. I'm going to start um, with this color combo here and I've actually got four different combos for you today. This isn't going to be a series, this is just kind of like four combos that I thought would look nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm starting out with Fired Brick, Ripe Persimmon, and Wild Honey. And like I shared with you guys with that Distress Oxide ink blending series, oh, I just dropped paper on the floor. Um, like I shared with you with that series, um, it's all about getting a ton of ink onto the paper. So I'm really loading up my blending brush or my blending foam, excuse me, blending foam and coming in and adding that color. I also like to start with the lightest color so that I can really bring that in almost halfway up this paper. By the way, this paper is Nina Classic Crest Solar White, 80 pound. And I want this to be super, super saturated. I want lots and lots of ink to work with because the more ink you have on the, on the surface of the paper, the more there is to blend and work with. All right, so this one's pretty saturated probably going to add more in a bit so I'm not too worried. I'm going to move on to right persimmon and I'm going to blend this across the center. I'm really loading this up and I'm just going to start blending this across. And I mostly want to lay down where the color is going to be most intense and then I'm going to worry about blending it um, to either side. Okay so I've got it pretty intense so now I'm going to sort of circular motion down into that yellow and see how the the darker orange is taking over that yellow completely don't worry because it's distressed oxide and it's a little bit opaque I can bring that yellow back in and kind of push the orange back that direction all right I'm just gonna soften out the orange coming up this way so that when I add the fired brick it's not gonna look like just a complete like stark line Okay, at this point, I like to clean up the work surface because I don't want, well, it'd probably be okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab a baby wipe. And I like to do a baby wipe followed by a paper towel. And that's because um, the baby wipe can leave a little bit of moisture behind. And I don't want it to seep up from the bottom of the cardstock. See, and it still got all that. Even though it looked like I got all of it, it didn't. Okay, this is when I like to protect my fingertips from all the ink, because this ink is still a little bit smudgy. So I take post-it tape, just that much, and I'm going to put it over my three fingers so I can hold it down. Coming in with fired brick now, and I really want this to be saturated and come in from the bottom edge. I'm really squishing down on that ink pad so that I get a lot of that red ink on there. And you know, this is a really big background. I might even bring the red down a little bit further and add an additional color. In fact, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add maybe like a purple because I think that'd be really, really pretty blending up to a purple. Making sure I have lots of ink on here. The more ink, the better, because that's really gonna get those colors blending. You know, when people ask about um, how do I get a really good blend, I really think a lot of it is practice and experience. The more you blend things, the better you'll get at it. Like I used to not be real good at blending, and I saw a huge improvement doing that blending series earlier this year. So if you really want to like 
take it upon yourself to learn how to blend really well, I'd recommend maybe just go ahead and follow those color combos and just blend, 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 and do as much as you can. And I think you'll actually really find that it works well. Okay, so the red's coming down really far, the orange is all the way down, the yellow is almost non-existent. So I'm first going to come back to this orange. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna introduce that, that last color. I am going to use Dusty Concord, and I actually have that slated for another combo, but this, I think it'll be really pretty on this one too. Okay, so I'm going to bring Dusty Concord in from this top edge. It's just going to intensify the red shade. I don't want it to be like super, super purpley, but I want there to be a little more variation in color as it travels up to that other end. All right, I'm just gonna try to fade this out a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna come back to that fired brick and I'm gonna work back in the other direction now, just so I can really blend these colors. Coming back to ripe persimmon. I really wanna bring this orange back. And then I'm going to bring in, well first I'm going to wipe up all this color. In fact, I'm gonna spray it. All right, and now I'm going to bring in the wild honey again. I'm gonna to try to just walk back some of this orange so that I don't lose all of the yellow. Especially because when I stamp the, the wildflowers from the stamp set, I'm going to lose a lot of that color down there at the bottom. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting a nice blend and that that bottom color is really visible. Okay, there is my first one. Hopefully that didn't take too long. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the other colors and I'm gonna speed through now that I've walked you through this one, just so we're not here all day.
Now that all the blending is done, I need to stamp on these backgrounds. And that last color combo was very unusual. Um, I wasn't sure how well it would work out, but I did see a picture online of a sunset that was like a bright orange to a teal. I'm like, how does this work? Nature's amazing. I don't know how they did it without making mud because I got that greenish color in the middle. Okay. I'm going to start out with this one right here, and I'm going to use one of the Misty Creative Corners so that I can stamp this image all the way off all edges. So I'm going to grab one of these. These are really big. All right, I want it to be about right there. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to the door of my Misty. So I'll put that right there, put that Butt it up against the corner and then lift out that, that right there. I'm going to use Versafine Onyx Black Ink. This is a really solid black ink. It's my most favorite, although I do like that new Alta New black pigment ink as well, but this is the one I have out right now, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to stand up because I want to make sure that I get every single Bit of this stamp. It's a really big stamp. All right, and then I can lift my background. You can see how crisp that background is. I think it looks gorgeous. And while I have this stamp on my Misty, I'm going to go ahead and stamp another one of the backgrounds. So I'm going to use this one now. Okay, love that, so pretty. Using the creative corners again. This one doesn't come up quite as far. I wish it came up a little farther, but that's okay. All right, there's that one right there. One more to go. Inking up this stamp again. And I can see where it hit the previous background, so I know where I need to ink it up again. All right, and there's that one right there. So all I need to do is put a grading on these cards and they're finished. I'm prepping four card bases. This is some um, Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock, and I'm scoring them at five and a half. These are all going to be top folding cards. I'm going to cut out my greetings using four different dies from Simon Says Stamp. One's actually from Kathy Zilski and Simon Says Stamp. I'm using Good Luck, Thanks Frame, You're Doing Awesome, and You're So Kind. Before I adhere the greetings to the card fronts, I'm going to adhere the card fronts to the actual card base. I'm using some Tombow Extreme Adhesive. I'm using Gina K Connect Glue and just putting dabs of glue all over this die cut. And before I adhere it, I'm going to just kind of dab it on that over there just to, just on some scratch paper and that will help get rid of any excess glue. So here are all the cards for today. Lots of different sunset color combos for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, all of the supplies, including the colors of ink that I used and the stamp set and the dyes, um, even the adhesive that I used, everything is listed down below in the video description 
or on the supply section at my blog. And uh, click through those links and shop there. I'd really appreciate it. That helps support my YouTube channel, my blog, and helps me bring videos like this to you three times a week. So thank you so much for watching. Um, on screen right now, you've got three more videos to check out. I'm linking to some of my ink blending series with the Distress Oxides from earlier this year in case you're wondering about some additional colors to use. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on Monday for another Make a Card Monday video.